Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be doing a tier list of every horror movie that I saw this year, or at least this half of the year. Um, it has to be a movie that was not from 2022, and so every other year is fair game. Um, so I'm doing January through June every horror movie that I saw so far, and then at the end of the year I'll do July through December. Um, and this is just a list of everything, you know, horror that I saw. Um, and as you can see, I've got the tiers here. Love at First Bite was like movies that I absolutely loved. And I went out and bought. Screaming for more, still might have bought it. Um, I just, you know, maybe it's not like favorite horror movies ever, but I do really like it. Bloody Good Time, I still enjoy myself, but it's not like a favorite movie of mine. Scared that it could be worse. I thought it was very okay at best. And um, the ones towards the lower end of that might even be close to like the bottom. And then A Fate Worse Than Death were movies that I just didn't like at all. So we're going to start off here with some of the classic Universal movie monsters. Uh, I kind of try to keep a pattern here. So you got the Universal classic movie monsters moving into like the Wolfman, some werewolf movies, some vampire movies. Then I got some Italian horror. Uh, I got the Evil Dead movies. And then uh, Hellraiser was kind of its own thing. I didn't really want to watch any more than the original. And then we got some early 2000s and some 2010 movies. And then we're going to end on, uh, a, I think it's a 2021 horror movie. So um, starting off with Dracula, um, they are so old that I do really like them uh, just because, you know, for what they did back then, they're good. But, like, they're not movies that I'm like, holy crap, I really loved it. Like, I gotta watch it all the time. Um, so, Dracula, for me, uh, is gonna go there. I do own it because I bought the whole, like, 4K pack. Um, but, for now, that's where I'm gonna put it. Just because, you know, um, they are so old that I don't think they're, like, anyone's, like, real favorite horror movies. Um... I'm going to put Frankenstein there also. Uh, I would say I like Dracula more than Frankenstein. Um, just kind of like the character more also. Uh, the Invisible Man, I will probably put Screaming for more because I did really like that one. Um, uh, the Mummy, I'm going to go put it here. These ones I'm going to go through a little faster than some of the other ones. A Creature from the Black Lagoon, I'll put up there also because I did enjoy that one. Those are my two favorite of the Universal movies, the, the monster movies. Um, Phantom, of the, Phantom of the Opera, uh, the more I thought about it, I didn't like it as much. But I still thought it was fine. It's just it is too much opera for me. Um, and then Wolfman is going to go there. So there will be, I, I, I will say, kind of quite a few because I'll be honest, I'm not going to like over rate or under rate something. So there'll probably be the most in like these two categories. But um, so for now, those are kind of where I'm going to put those universal movies, those those classic horror movies. Um, I, I do like these other two specifically. Uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon, I thought was really interesting what they were able to do. And some of the, like that movie actually feels like it held up really well. Um, and then The Invisible Man, it's just, I find it's kind of enjoyable. I really like Clive Rains, um, or Claude Rains, I mean, as uh, The Invisible Man. And it, I just found it to be pretty enjoyable. Um, so. Uh, next, we're moving on to the newer Wolfman, I think from 2010, uh, with Anthony Hopkins, Emily Blunt, and Benicio Del Toro. I watched this one a few nights ago. Um, I would say I like the original slightly more, but the gore in this one's good. Um, still not bad or anything, and it's fine. I, I don't really think it's like, oh, I really want to watch that again, but I liked it enough. It was one time. It was fine. Um, the story is a little bit different and some of the, the plot twists, um, I didn't think were like that, like, they were pretty obvious. Like, you're like, okay, yeah, I saw that coming. Um, but still, you know, it's good. I, I, I think the original is better just because it's shorter. They add probably an extra half hour at least on, uh, this version of the Wolfman and you kind of feel it. 
So uh, that's, I guess, my biggest problem with it. I don't really think I would want to watch it again or I would give this version of the Wolfman another watch. So uh, next we have a American Werewolf in London. Uh, I did enjoy this. I don't think I'll buy it, but it was it was fine. I, I thought it was pretty good. Um, I can see why people liked it. I wasn't expecting it to be kind of like as light as it was. Whenever it had horror, it was good, but I wasn't expecting some of the kind of bad acting at times. I, I didn't know anything about the movie, um, but I can see why it's so popular. Some of the things in it make it pretty interesting. Um, the, the quote about uh, beware the the moon, beware the moon or beware the full moon, and then like the goat's head bar, things like that, I, you know, were pretty memorable. And then the transformation scene is what it, I had seen. That was the only part I had seen before it was uh, most famous for. So they did really well with that. And if I do buy it, I don't think I'll watch it a whole lot, but I, I did think it was pretty good. So um, next is one I, I really did not like. Uh, the Howling. This was one that I just didn't get the, the like, what I had heard about it. And I watched it. I was like, I just don't see it. Um, I, I just didn't like anything about it. Uh, it's between the story. I had a hard time kind of following where it was, like, going with things. Like, it just kind of starts off. And, like, this woman's investigating a serial killer. She's, like, a news anchor. And then she goes to therapy. And then... Um, they tell her to go on vacation and they tell her the specific spot and I don't know why it's just like, it's too, I guess, convenient. Like she listens to this spot and then it's, or this vacation spot where all these people are meeting and they're all werewolves. I just kind of was like, I don't know. It's just, I didn't really like it. Um, it's, it's one of those also that I thought had a really bad scene and the, the sex scene in the howling is like. Wow, that's terrible. Uh, I just thought it was stupid. Um, yeah, I definitely won't rewatch that one. Uh, Silver Bullet. It's a little cheesy. Um, it was fine. I, I don't, again, I don't think I'd rewatch this one. Uh, but it was, you know, it was okay. I, I didn't dislike it to the degree of the howling. I just kind of thought it was just like very, um, I don't know. It was lacking in some things. The narration at times kind of felt out of place. When the werewolf was on screen, I was enjoying it, but like a lot of it's kind of just like getting to know characters, and it was just like it was fine, but it wasn't something like all that memorable. Um, I enjoyed it for the one time, but it's not like something I'm gonna go out and rewatch time and time again. Uh, so now we're getting into one of my favorites. I'm wearing the shirt for a reason. Uh, Salem's Lot. This was one that I really liked when I saw it. Um, now, it's not perfect. I do think it's a little too long, but I do really like it. And it's definitely, it's in my top, like, three favorite vampire movies. Uh, I hadn't known, I didn't really know anything about this movie. I just kept seeing the, the cover art for it, and I really liked it for years. Even one of my favorite bands kind of made an album cover very similar to it in, in like, honor of that movie. And I was like, you know, I really want to check this one out. And I watched it at work one day. I really liked it, and ever since then, uh, it's been one of my favorites. So uh, this was one that I definitely was glad that I watched, um, and I'll probably watch that one, I don't know, a few times a year. I might have to skip it through it a little bit because it is long. Three hours for a vampire movie is, is a bit much, but um, it's because some of it is set up and... If I don't watch it with someone, I know I can skip that, like, opening, like, 45 minutes to an hour where a lot of it just kind of doesn't feel like it's necessary. So, um, next we're getting into the two Fright Night movies, the, the original and the remake. Um, I, I'm going to go ahead and say I'm not a fan of these. Um, I don't really think either one was all that great. Uh, I would, I don't know which one I would say I like more. They're very similar. The only thing that I can say that I liked about each was towards the end. I, it started to interest me more than like the first, like, I don't know, three fourths of the movie. But once he actually goes after the vampire, I like it a little bit more. Um, 
I did like, though, that in the remake, uh, Colin Farrell kills the original actor who was... I don't know if his name was Jerry in the original also. I, I can't remember. But, yeah, I mean, I, I did like that. Um, and then Colin Farrell, I think, was the better version of that vampire. And he was much more intimidating, but also much more, like, charming towards women, I think. Or at least better looking, I would say. Um, I, I guess if you told me to pick one, I'd probably say the original was slightly better, but... I don't know. I'm just not a big fan of it. And I know those are like classic, or at least the original is considered a classic, but I just didn't really like it. Um, so, yeah, that's unfortunate. Some of the classic movies, to me, aren't as good as what a lot of people would say they are. Um, I'm a little bit pickier with my, I guess, horror movies. So, um, I won't like say I really like something if I don't, just because... I, I don't want to lie about it, so um, here's another one. Next, Demons. This actually, honestly, most of these Italian horror movies, I'm not a fan of. I've kind of had to force myself to sit through some of these. The dubbing, like the, because it, it's Italian, so they're talking in like their native Italian language. Um, some actors are, but then some actors are speaking English, so they're dubbing over the other ones that are speaking Italian, and it's just so bad. And then the acting can be really bad. And, like, this movie, actually, for, like, the first half, I was really into. And then, like, the second half, when it starts getting into, like, when the... the okay, they're really zombies, but they're just... They're, they look different. Um, so when the demons... Uh, start to really get aggressive and there's more of them is kind of where it started to lose me. It just felt like a generic zombie movie. Um, but the the first half where we get to like the theater and, you know, we're seeing how this all starts, I was into a lot. And I was like, okay, this is actually pretty good. Um, but yeah, the second half kind of lost me. Tenebrae, uh, another kind of classic hit to most people, I think is definitely better than Demons. Um but, like, I was, like, so bored throughout it. Um, and I didn't find it to be all that much of, like, a twist at the end. I'm, I won't say it just in case you've never seen it. But uh, I do think this is one of the better, like, Jalo movies. And definitely one of De Dario Argento's better ones. You can see why people like it. Uh, I just, I don't think I really like his movies uh, Suspiria is the only exception, and I don't think it's great. I just like it enough to say that, like, I'll watch it because um, I think it's kind of unique and then, like, the color of it. Where Also, that was the first one I ever saw. These other ones, um, that one deals with supernatural. This one deals with more like just a serial, or I mean, not a serial killer, but a uh, just a murderer going out and, and killing people uh, because of this book called Tenebrae that this author wrote and he it's inspired this person to go out and kill and it's interesting but I, I didn't like love it um, now Deep Red is definitely my favorite of these I, I would put it here because I would give this one another chance and honestly I would consider giving Tenebrae another chance but I was pretty bored through it where Deep Red I was actually fairly interested um some of the kills in these two movies are also much better than a lot of the other, like, Jalo movies. Or that is kind of what they're known for is their style. But still, um, like, there's some memorable ones. Tenebrae has a really over-the-top kill. Uh, I want to say it was that one where a lady gets her, like, arm chopped off and she's just spraying the blood all over the wall. And it's like, wow, that's a little excessive. Um, but it's memorable. And then Deep Red... Um, well, I think the killer wasn't as good. I think that the movie was much easier to watch. Uh, I found it much more enjoyable for some reason. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just kind of a small preference deep right over Tenebrae. I could move Tenebrae up, but I really don't feel like I'm in a big rush to see it. Inferno was kind of a struggle to get through. I'm not going to lie. Um, this one I had to watch so many different times, like sit down and like pause it, rewatch some stuff because I was just like I don't even remember what I just watched because it was just so slow and boring. 
the opening was interesting, but a lot of the like scenes just seem dragged out in these in these like Italian horror movies that I'm like, oh my god, I'm like just can we get to it? And like they're not that long, but they feel very long, and I think that's part of their style. Um, now I'm watching these based off of a recommendation of one of my favorite YouTubers, and uh, he's really into them. The channel name is Drum Dumbs, and I do usually agree with his opinion. Um, these movies just aren't my thing, but he's really into them, so I was like, all right, we'll give them a watch. Uh, and they're like Italian slashers, and like Inferno is more of a supernatural one, so I thought I was going to like it. Uh, but the story was just kind of like all over the place, and I was just having a hard time following it. Um, I watched his review on it, and he said that it kind of had some issues because... Argento uh, was sick at the time, so it was, he was kind of sharing like the responsibility with the guy who technically really did direct it. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't like Inferno a whole lot. Some of these I feel like I would need to rewatch, but like I just don't want to because they're so just hard to sit through. Uh, especially this one, Phenomena. This was the worst one. I I hated this movie. Um, not gonna lie, this one was. Just boring from start to finish. I don't think I liked a single thing other than the cast was good. And then like the opening kill. But other than that, I was like, wow, this is one of the most boring horror movies. And it just kind of didn't make a whole lot of sense. Like this girl has like telepathic powers with insects. And there's a serial killer. And I want to say it's like Switzerland. And she somehow connects the two. Like, she finds out who the killer is through her telekinetic powers of insects. And she, like, sleepwalks and sees what the killer's, like, doing to people. It just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I don't know. I didn't really like it. Um, this next one, I think, was one of the better ones, Opera. Uh, the lip dubbing is very noticeable in this one. But at least I think that it was, like, much more enjoyable. And the, the killer was pretty decent uh i thought it was pretty obvious who it was but i think that it was interesting making this actress sit like he would attack her or do something knock her out and then she'd wake up and she'd be tied somewhere and she'd have like razors or nails or something uh taped to her eyelids so she would be forced to watch and like anytime you know she'd be blinking it would cut her eyelids but she'd still sit there and have to watch like someone be murdered and it was kind of interesting um and it was also this person is trying to push her career further. So they're killing anyone that might stand in her way of getting higher. And, or like, because she's like an actress and broad, or not Broadway, but, you know, whatever. She's a stage actress. And, uh, for example, the person who had the lead role, she was the understudy. They go out and kill the, the person in the lead role so the main actress can take it. And, um, this one I would probably rewatch. I would say Deep Red or Opera, one of the more easily watchable ones. Um, but uh, again, I'm I'm not in love with these Italian horror movies, so that's kind of the best I can say with it. So, um, so now we're moving on to my three favorites of all of these: uh, Evil Dead, the original. Uh, if you've seen any of my recent videos, you know how much I've liked this. I bought the shirt. I bought a bunch of like stuff from the movies. Um, for example, I still on the way. I have the chainsaw and boomstick. I spent a fair amount of money off of Etsy for someone to use a 3D printer to do it. Um, and then I went and bought a bunch of Funko Pops, which I'll do a, a video separately. They're on my shelf. Um, at, uh, one of them's Ash, and I think it's pretty cool. So... Obviously, I really like Evil Dead, and this has probably become my favorite. We'll say, like, series. Um, I think it's the most, like, consistently enjoyable from movie to movie, where, like, I can watch any one of them, and I think they're all equivalent, but for different reasons. So, like, if I want really funny, I'll go with Army of Darkness. If I want really horror and gory, I'll go Evil Dead. If I want a mix, I'll go Evil Dead 2. And then I had already seen the remake. That was the one I saw first. So I was like, whenever the game came out, I played it. I was really into it. And then uh, the song by one of my favorite bands, uh, Ice Nine Kills, 
they came up with the song Ex Mortis, which is the Book of the Dead in the, in the movies. Um, I really that was like my favorite song on the album. I was like, okay, I really got to sit down and watch these movies. And um, the first viewing of Evil Dead, I was like, well, that was a little bit slow, but I was like, you know, I I did find it pretty enjoyable. Um, watched Army of Darkness and was just kind of like laughing the whole time. And I was like, okay, I, I think I do really like these movies. Watched Evil Dead two and fell in love with it. And I just went and was like, okay, I'm watching Evil Dead again. I went one, two, and then three, and I was like, okay, I, I love these movies. And they've become some of my favorite horror movies now just because they are pretty enjoyable. Um, so, yeah, the, the whole Evil Dead trilogy, um, Bruce Campbell just makes them. I've been watching the TV show Ash vs. Evil Dead, and I so badly want the, <laughs> as stupid as it is, the Ashy Slashy puppet. But you can't find them now unless you go on eBay and they're like two hundred dollars minimum. But um, yeah, that that ashy slashy is like hilarious. The wakey wakey hands off your snakey whenever he's like sleeping, and then he's you know you see the puppet come up. He's got the little chainsaw. It's like it's hilarious. The voice actor they had for it is great. Um, so yeah, Evil Dead has become. Some of my favorite movies and the TV show is pretty funny as well. So, um, next we have Hellraiser. Um, it's kind of in between Screaming for More and Bloody Good Time. I would say just because of the movies in Bloody Good Time, I, I would probably rather watch Hellraiser. Uh, I did like it, but it's not one that I'm going to buy. Um, I, I think it's pretty enjoyable and it's got really good practical effects. But some of it's a little drawn out, um, and it takes a while to kind of get going. But this is where you kind of get the the story of, like, the Cenobites. Like, this is where you first start to see them. Um, they're not as featured as much in this one, but it's more of the story between the uncle and his, like, I guess, his brother's wife. Because um, the brother is married to this woman, and she is cheating on him with, I think his, I don't remember his name. This was like one of the first, if not the first movie I saw from this year. So I don't remember their names, but I just remember, you know, they're, they're kind of having an affair. The daughter moves in and uh, up in the attic, Frank, as I remember his name, he's like the main villain and he dies in that attic because he opens up the box. They like tear him to pieces and his blood is like absorbed into the ground. And then when the brother gets like a cut on like a nail or something, his blood falls into the into the wood and it like resurrects Frank. So, um, but yeah, this, the, the practical effects on this are really good. I did enjoy this one a lot. Um, I would say it's probably not like a favorite horror movie or anything of mine, but I did enjoy it. And if I rewatched it, I'd have a good time. It's just not one that I'm like, I'm going to go out and buy. Um these next two are movies that I actually did buy. They're not here yet. Um, but House on Haunted Hill. This is the remake from like 99 with Famke Jensen. Um, and I forget his name. But he's like her husband in this. Um, but yeah, I, I'd enjoy this one. It's not like great. But it's very similar to those like 13 Ghosts, Ghost Ship. Um, movies like that where it's the early 2000s, late 90s, like, feeling to it. And the special effects aren't great. But that's the era of horror I grew up with, so I kind of really enjoy it in a weird way. I think they're, like, kind of... They're not great, but they're enjoyable because I think they just have something about them that I like. Um, for example, 13 Ghosts has Matthew Lillard, and I think he, like, is a big part of why I like that movie. Ghost Ship, I just think, is a really interesting story. Um, and, like, this one, House on Haunted Hill, is a remake of the, like, old Vincent Price movie. And I, I think it's got a pretty good cast. Uh, I like it. And it's probably towards, like, the low, or I guess the, the higher end of Screaming for More, but, like, it's the low end of Love at First Bite. Like, I wouldn't say I loved it, but I didn't like it. Um, House of Wax, I did like a little bit more. Some of the, like, kills in this are pretty good. Um, 
I had heard so many bad things about this movie for years that I was like, I'm just going to avoid it. And then finally I was like, okay, I'm just going to watch it because it looks interesting. I like the cover. And then I watched it. And I was like, actually, that was pretty good. I was like, I'm surprised people didn't really like it. Um, but it's kind of come around and uh, it, it just has a Scream Factory release. Um, and I got that. I got Scream Factories for both of these. Uh, for some reason, House on Haunted Hill was $30 and it was on sale. I was like, geez, that's way too much. But I got it because I just, I was like looking through Amazon and they had a bunch of horror movie sales. And it was like, oh, if you spend this much, you get free shipping. And I was like, whatever. So I got that, another Funko Pop, Arachnophobia, which that's, I'd seen that one before. But I got that one because I got a friend who's afraid of spiders and I just want to scare the shit out of her. So <laughs> I told her we're going to watch it. Um, and then uh, next is Cabin Fever. Um, I like the cast, or at least the main actor who was in Boy Meets World. He was kind of one of the reasons I watched it. And then also because another Ice Nine Kills song is Cabin Fever. Uh, it's called A Rash Decision. But I didn't really think this one was that great. I thought it was fine. I would say out of all these, it's like very low end of bloody good time because there was things in it that I liked and I was debating on whether I was going to buy it or not it, because sometimes I buy movies, even if I don't love them, just to give them a second watch and like I there's things I like. And I'm like, OK, well, maybe now that I know what it's like, the second viewing, I'll like it more. I never did buy it. I probably won't. But it's got moments that I like. Cast is good. But um, Eli Roth movies I'm not a big fan of. I did just kind of buy <clears throat> one of... I think he's more of a producer. Um, it's called Haunt. I had seen it when it first came out. That was one that I also kind of didn't love, but I thought it was okay. That was one that's coming in Am with Amazon. I um, thought it was good, but not like as good as I had heard. So I was like, okay, I'm going to rewatch this one and maybe I'll like it more. Uh, and it was on sale for like $14 or something. So, um, next is Hostel. I didn't like this one. That's too, too much. Not gore. I don't care about that. It's just as weird as it sounds, it was just like too much of like sex and drugs. It's just like this is so unnecessary. It was like two, or it was like three guys are the main characters and two of them are from america one of them's from like germany or something and there's like backpacking through europe and they stop in this one area and they meet these girls and it's just like the movie just kind of felt like an excuse to just put like naked girls on the screen just have them do a bunch of like drugs and like <laughs> i didn't think it was that great when it was the horror like whenever like the one dude it, um it's like getting nails like with a nail gun shot through his knees or legs or something. That was interesting. And then the other guy, you know, he's like, I think he gets killed or no, he doesn't get killed. He's like the only one that survives. Um, but he, he's getting like caught up or he's getting his fingers cut off or something. I can't exactly remember. This is another one I watched really early on, but, um, the look like, when that like doctor looking guy is, uh, like, you know, hurting these people. That was good. I like that. But like everything else is like, this is kind of too much. Just didn't like it. Um, so yeah, I'm not a really big fan of Eli Roth movies. Uh, Triangle. I had taken this one off of a recommendation of a YouTuber and I didn't like it as much as she did, but I didn't think it was like bad. It's like interesting for sure. I, I enjoyed where it was going but I kind of was bored by the end because I was like, okay, I get which direction you're going. And you kept, so basically the triangle it's, it's, I think in the Bermuda triangle also, but these people are on a sailboat and our, our main actress is, I think her name is Melissa George and she's got a autistic son. She feels bad about leaving him for a day to go sailing with her friend. They go out and there's a storm a giant, like, uh, cruise ship comes and they get on board and they think that it's going to have tons of people, but they go on and it's empty. But then all of a sudden there's someone killing them off. And then the triangle is that they're kind of stuck in this time loop. And Melissa George is, um, 
there's like multiple versions of herself on the ship from different periods of time. And she realizes that whenever they were getting onto the boat, they looked up and they saw someone and that it was her that was looking down because it's like later in time. And it's interesting when you find that out, but like a lot of it, you're like, okay, well I know where this is going. So let's just get to it. Uh, And then like the ending, there was some like parts of it that I was like, okay, I didn't, particularly see that coming but like the overall like how it ended i was like okay yeah i that i got where it was going so um good not great but not bad at all Uh, and that's kind of how i feel about this next one last shift a lot of it was pretty good because it's like a psychological like horror and it's got like a cult involved and so there's this police station this girl it's her first night she's a rookie her father was murdered by this uh like cult and I think he was a police officer also and they're like ghosts are haunting this police station and uh, there's some crazy stuff that gets involved with this cult and they're doing some things but towards the end it just kind of got a little bit too much Um, and it would have been screaming for more if it would have been consistently enjoyable for me throughout the whole thing but kind of towards the end I was starting to feel like I was, was tired of it now, the problem is also some of these movies is I'm watching them on Tubi. And when you add in like an extra 30 minutes of ads, uh, an hour and a half feels like two hours or it is two hours. And then when you watch something that's two hours, it's even longer. Salem's Lot, I cannot believe that I got through with how many ads were through it. And then I feel like I loved it as much as I did because Salem's Lot is three hours without ads. And then it's three hours with ads. That could have been enough for an hour. I sat through that at work. And then before that, I watched another favorite movie of mine, um, 30 Days of Night. So it was like, I just watched two fairly decent, or, you know, some of my favorite vampire movies. Actually, those are my two favorite. And I really enjoyed it. But, like, I watched Triangle and Last Shift. And I was kind of like, I saw where they were going. It's just taking a while. And it just, like, felt like it was too much. Last Shift, for a lot of it, it was just, like, a lot of psychological horror where... Um, it was, you know, hinting that there might not be something quite right with this person, kept doing it, doing it and doing it. And it was like, okay, we've got like got 20 minutes left. What's going to be the, like, where's the story or the rest of the story? How's this going to finish? And then when it finished, I was just like, eh, didn't think it was that great. It was fine. And I would rewatch it because the, the psychological horror stuff when I was into it was, I was into it, but, um, yeah, for a while, it's kind of like, where's this going? Um, Jeepers Creepers 2, I'd heard a lot of bad things. And it's not great, but it's not that bad. Um, it could be one of those movies that, again, just because I went into it with such low expectations, that, come on, uh, that I was expecting it to be terrible. Now, the third one, I'm just not even going to bother with. Uh, so, this one takes place primarily on like a bus uh and it's a bunch of like high school students or like the the football team uh coming back from like a game and on the way back they're on the, that long stretch of highway if you ever saw the first one and uh the the creeper throws his like he's got like this bone blade and it hits their tire and they try to keep going but then he throws another one he starts killing them off one by one and there's kind of this other opening story where the creeper had killed this guy's son and he takes his like dog and his, his other son to go hunt the creeper and it kind of ends in this final fight where the creeper doesn't so much die but he, he kind of stays dormant and he hangs him up for I think it's like every 20 years for or it's every 24 years for 24 days the creeper hunts and so 24 years later he's like hang up oh, he's got him hung up in the barn and um yeah, it's good, but I, I didn't, like, love it. I'm not going to buy it or anything. Um, so, I mean, I did find it to be pretty decent. I had heard so many bad things that I was like, okay, it's not that bad. Um, this one, Pulse, had my interest because of all the scenes that I had saw that were horror. And this one is a Japanese horror movie that is, you know, it's subtitled so you can you read it. But... Um, Man, was this one boring. I got what I was trying to do and all, but it just 
the horror scenes that I had seen were really good. Too bad they were spread apart. And another one I watched on Tubi, so it felt even longer. Um, it was spread apart fairly, like, like the best scene in the movie was within, like, the first half an hour. Then, like, another, like, 20 to 40 minutes later, another horror scene that's pretty good. And then, like, another 40. It's just, like, holy crap. It's, like, it just... There's, like, a lot of just dialogue and then, like, brief, really good scene, dialogue, and it just kept happening. And then, like, some of the special effects were very early 2000s. Um, it had moments that I liked it, but overall, I was like, man, this one's boring. I watched it with some friends that are really into, like, anime and Japanese culture, and I'm into horror and I don't like anime, so I was like, all right. I'll watch some Japanese horror, and this just wasn't my thing. Uh, I didn't find it scary. I was laughing through most of it. Um, she was scared. She's she's the one that's scared of arachnophobia. I just, well, I didn't like it. Um, I thought it was pretty boring. So, yeah, and then lastly is another one that this one had me actually, the first half, I thought was great, and then it just took a complete nosedive towards crap. I just didn't like it. Uh, the actress from the Halloween movies, the newer ones, Andy Matichek, I think is her name. Um, she's got a son who... I don't exactly remember how... I saw this early on, so I don't exactly remember. But he gets sick, and it's kind of like... He turns into basically a vampire. And he has to feed on blood. And she's basically trying to find, like... Excuse me, like a, a cure... Or something, maybe not a cure, but trying to help him. And so she's keeping him fed. And it just kind of got too much. Like, the first half is great, actually. Some of, like, this, seeing this kid get really sick and how, like, how bad off he looks for the first time was great. Second time, I was like, okay, you know, I see why they're doing it. And third time, I was just like, okay, whatever. I don't really care. The kid's not going to die. And then the ending comes, and I'm like, eh wasn't that great um but yeah the first half really good second half horrible uh just didn't like it so um yeah if there's any more of these you, you know you want to know more on feel free to leave a comment um again the ones that i loved a lot these four especially the evil dead movies um i i thought these two were probably some of my second you know i'd go with those as my favorites afterwards invisible man uh, American Were Werewolf in London I might rewatch just because I didn't expect that tone. So it kind of made me not like it as much as I feel like I should have. Um, but there were things in it that I did like. These movies are all kind of just good, but not great. Um, so that's kind of how I you know, would view them. Uh, and then these are like, I don't really want to rewatch them. The only one I would consider is Tenebrae. Uh, and then these I would never watch again. I don't know which would be the worst of them. Probably Phenomena. I just found that to be unbearable. Um, I'd probably give The Howling another watch if I had to, but I don't want to. Sun, I don't want to watch again. So, yeah, that's how I feel about these movies. Um, let me know what you guys think of some of these. Uh, some of the ones I have planned for the next, you know, the second half of the year. Um, I've never seen From Dusk Till Dawn. I've already watched Child's Play 3. I'm in the middle of watching uh, Bride of Chucky. Uh, I've never seen The House of a Thousand Corpses, um, Devil's Rejects, 3 from Hell. Psycho 2, I'm going to try and watch, but that one's hard to find. Um, I've got a whole stack of movies I ran it over there, like Sorority Row. I've never seen Shaun of the Dead. So, yeah, but... There's some actually fairly classic horror movies I've never seen for being a big horror fan. But I know what I, I usually like, so that's why I've kind of some of them. For example, I don't really like zombie movies. So we, I didn't think I was going to like Evil Dead because I thought they were zombies. They kind of are, but it's done in a way that I really like. And Ash, or Bruce Campbell, does such a good job that I just kind of love them. So, um and, like, vampire movies I really like, so I thought I was going to like Fright Night. Just didn't really like it. So, uh, yep, thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya.